Hello everyone, this is Seth Fish with Harding Theatre and we are talking in our little series about the play that goes wrong and all of the uh, effects. So uh, this is the third one. I've already made one about general design and construction and stuff and uh, and how to go forward with the play and then I made one about the second floor and this one we're going to talk about all the other effects. So uh, let's jump on in. The first biggest one we're just going to talk about right here are the walls that fall. Uh, in the play, it calls for four walls to fall. We just did three. We did the door flats, the uh, fireplace, and the window. Uh, how we made them fall is pretty simple, is we just hinged them to the ground. So if you see them, they look like flats, but if you zoom in closely, you can kind of notice that we got hinges on these flats. And so they go in sequential order. They go door flat, and then they go, uh, then they go fireplace flat, and then they go window flat. On the backstage view of the flats, if you will notice that we uh, have reinforced with some uh, corner bracing and all the flats to kind of hold them together and their joints together because they take a beating every day when they're falling. So we just had to reinforce all of them. Uh, one thing I will notice that I did dare, uh, vary from and then the when you saw it in the professional, in the professional ones in the flats fall, you could kind of see that they had some structure built behind it that they attached them to. Well, that's because the flats, you know, are being smacked around and being uh, and being treated poorly all throughout the show. The door's flinging open, people are jumping through windows. So they needed some frame to keep the flats all together and holding still. Well, I didn't want to put flats and structure behind the flats because I thought they kind of broke the magic. So what I did is I actually have these pillars going up across the back and then these top headers and then another pillar kind of had, heading towards, towards the bottom. Those kind of acted as the structure that all my flats attached to. So when these flats fall, the top header actually stays. As you can kind of see, don't line up quite right a little bit. And then just the flats at the blue, that's what goes and falls down and those stay up. And that kind of provides a structure for the flats to attach to during the show so that everything can stay in place until it's ready for them to fall. All right, let's talk about this flat right here, the wind, uh, the fireplace flat. There's a lot of things that fall off on it. There's the voice pipe, the, uh, the cartouche, the punch through holes, the mantle, the dog, all kind of fall out and go through different things. The majority of this was done with, was with push pins or cotterless, cotterless uh, pins uh, that we have. You can see them stuck back here in the wall. It's pretty simple. We just pulled them out. Uh, and pulled them out when it was time. And that's what made things fall. We had great No, um, This paper right here is paper that we uh, just taped every night to uh, the back of the, of the, of the, uh, f the framing. This is all on Velcro. So the dog portrait was a bit trickier because in the play, the dog portrait starts here, it drops to the floor, gets picked up, put back in place again. I think it drops another time and then for, and then during intermission, it has to come back up. And then at the end of intermission, it kind of falls again. The way we had to do that is actually, we had deep sea fishing uh, fish line, which is 150 pound rated fishing line that we have here. And so what it is, is we have the fishing line attached to the door por dog portrait and somebody on back here with a dog clip. And what will happen is when it comes time to drop, we unlash this from the cleat, let it drop. And then they pull on the fishing line back down. It comes back up and then it drops it again. And then we pull it back up. And the third time when it needs to drop and be taken off stage, we unlash the cleat from uh, the cleat from, I mean, we, the dog clip from the line, and that way the line just gets pulled through and goes up through the hole. And then the person on stage can just kind of pull off the dog frame and take it and take all the uh, line with it. Joy the horse, I love Charles and I love books. I could not have approved more of the match. Don't go, don't go anymore. It's well known that you're overprotective of your sister. All right, let's talk about the scuttle voice pipe fire trick. 
So in the play, you start off with somebody on the voice pipe up there pouring a liquid into the voice pipe and then the voice pipe has down here it has liquid coming out of it gets poured into the scuttle and then later on someone throws a match in the scuttle and it lights on fire and someone runs out with a fire extinguisher so the one over here is pretty easy that's just a garden hose with a funnel attached to it going through the wall and there's a bucket on the other side same thing is over here. This is a garden hose with a funnel attached to it and a bucket on this end. On the other side of the flat, I've got a garden hose with a funnel and we've got this hole over here. So when it comes time, we, we attach the hose here, to turn it and attach it to the other end of the garden hose in there to create our to create our funnel we hold the funnel high pour water in and then let physics do its job water comes through this and he pours it down into the bucket after i finished this garden hose wasn't great i was last minute that's all i had go get yourself some sink lines like they use for the sprayers on the side sinks or underside use that it's the same effect it will be a lot easier and you're not gonna get this weird kinking look on it so go ahead and use sink, uh, your sink um, tubing. I don't know the technical name. I'm not great at this with plumbing. All right, so what happens is you take the voice pipe and you hold it down and you got liquid in there and then shortly after fire comes out. The way we end up doing it, and uh, this is just a way, is if you see we've got a hole in the fire scuttle. So what we did is after the water came in here, we shoved some flammable, um, some, some flash paper through the hole and then we lit it from the inside and the flash paper and the fire came through the pipe and then got this big flash of fire. And then immediately he came out with a fire extinguisher, a little purchasable one we got from Lowe's for like $24. Like one of them lasted us an entire week of runs and kind of sprayed it real quick and we got the look. I'll admit this is one of our weaker effects that we've gotten, but it got us through the show and I am more than happy to hear other suggestions or see how other people did this kind of creative trick. You and Charles <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. There it goes. You know, you don't appear very upset about it all. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I've got it under control. Uh, Inspector, good evening. We. All right, door wall. Let's get to the biggest one first. The door falls off. The door gets treated very poorly throughout the show. People are constantly slamming, opening, running through, and causing all sorts of problems. So the door has to open and shut so many times. Then at the end of the show, uh, Collymore grabs the door, says it's locked, and then the door has to come off his hinges. The way we did that, we're supposed to do it, is we're gonna use magnets, really strong magnets to hold the hinges on. Well, guess what? I ordered magnets and the magnets never arrived. So I had to go and think of something up on the fly. So what me and one of my crew members came up with is we've got these latches with the hinges on them. So the hinge is permanently attached to this piece of board right here and down here. You got these boards attached to the hinges and then they are super latched on tight to hold into place. And so it comes time for the door to come off. We come, we undo our latches Make sure it's clear. And then the actor, he's like, the door's locked. Then he grabs the handle. And this is not a, this is actually not where it hinges, but it looks like it far away. And it's a handle. And he grabs the door right there, grabs the, the, the doorknob, and he pulls it off. And then it is off of its hinges. Thomas Collymore, it's true. I have the inspector move the money. But if you think for one second that I'm going down for this, ah! Oh. He's the, door. the shield. So the idea that I had originally was we, we had ordered a nice plastic shield and we're going to have that plastic shield attached to a piece of tie liner string that the actor was going to activate himself. The idea is the actor opens the door, the shield flips down, smacks him in the face and he rips it off the wall and throws it out. Well, our shield never came. Uh, so what we had to do on the fly is I had this shield hanging around in the shop and it's supposed to be, uh, and it's made out of plywood. Well, I didn't want the actor being, not in being control of a piece of plywood hitting his face. So what we ended up doing is he opens the door. There are some loose pin hinges. You've got two loose pin hinges. 
that one, that one is for the first swing, and that one is when he rips it out and throws it out. So the actor opens the door and we pull that hinge. Now, because it's plywood, I didn't want the actor risk hitting himself with the, uh, with the piece of plywood. So he stands behind the door a good, a good bit. The, when this hinges down, it hinges and stops at the same plane as the door frame. And so he stands back. And so when it finishes flipping down, he runs his hand himself into it and then he gets the effect. And so that way he's not in danger and then uh, of hurting himself. And then once it's flipped down, he goes ahead and we pull the hinge out of here and then he just pulls it straight out and then, he, then the actor tosses it off stage. <laughs> Window flat. Let's talk about the curtain falling. Our curtain rod is actually held up with two strings. In the in the actual flat are these docket uh, pocket door pulls. So these are the kind of things you put on doors that usually when you need to get the you pull them out and so you can pull on a door, a sliding door. Well, we kind of reverse engineered them. So we shoved them through the wall like that. And this is what the strings are holding on. And when it comes time, we pull back on these and it drops out and the string that's holding up the curtains drop off. <laughs> when it comes time for the window to be popped out, we use Velcro. Good old fashioned Velcro windows. Dark, dark night, Cecil. Is that good? You can barely make out the trees. The clock. I had fun with this one. So we made a clock. In the play, people stuff themselves into the clock and stay there for a considerable amount of time. The clock gets picked up, moved around, the clock gets put back, and then towards the end of the show, the clock opens to magically reveal someone has ran around from backstage and came out the clock. When they were supposed to be behind that door, they emerged from the clock. A lot of fun. So what we have is we have our clock. It opens. And back here, we have two trap doors. The first trap door is to get opens up backstage from the clock. So we have a door that you can go through to get to yourself backstage. Now, here's where the second trap door is, and that's into the flat. If you'll notice, we've got a barrel bolt on there to keep it locked so the person has to move around and be carried. And then we have a flat here that sits that we put there so that way it sits there so when you move the clock you can't tell that on the wall there's uh there's actually a flat there and then it comes time you pull out the flat you unbolt it and you've got access again the key thing to know here is you have to make sure your flat trick door in the wall is bigger and has enough room for this door to uh, fit through. And also you need to know the size of your actors because I had made a mistake on this. I had counted the size of the first actress, um, the lady who is supposed to be in the play, she gets trapped in the clock, but the person playing um, the, the technician who hides in there, they were a bit bigger and so they couldn't fit in the clock. So we had to accommodate for them by opening up this door as they came into the clock so they could kind of fit in here. And that's a mistake on my fault. But the idea is still the same. You have a clock, make sure they can fit into it, and you have a smaller trap door that can lock, and you have a bigger tra trap door behind it. Uh, rotating bookshelf. I made a mistake on this one too, and I didn't account for the size of people when I made it a rotating bookshelf. So I set up to be a rotating bookshelf, but it turned out I made the bookshelf too thick and people couldn't actually rotate through the bookshelf. So on the fly, we just went from making a rotating bookshelf to just, it's a, to just a, a false door that opens and closes so that people can get in there. And then the director was kind and he just kind of went with it and he was fine and he made that work. <laughs> ah! 
elevator. So originally when I was going through the designs of this, I developed this really complicated Tetris structure that flipped around and rotated depending on the needs. Because in the show, it starts out as a working elevator. People go in the doors and, they, and then you hear effects and then they come out the doors and they go in, they go down. But over time, the elevate, uh, elevator starts breaking down. At one point, it gets so bad that someone walks in the door, you hear sound, see smoke, and they open the doors and you see them literally crawling across trying to get into the elevator. And I developed this way in these steps for to rotate and move and mix around all sorts of platforms moving to make this happen but then i kind of went through some renditions and kind of rethought it and kind of re-envisioned it and in the end it was so simple so you come they open and close the door elevator doors and then what we have is when it's working they close the doors they come running around they go up the steps and then this flat right here is a false flat it's a door and it just hinges and so they open the door they walk through they close the door and then they walk on when it's time for the elevator to break down, well, all they do is the crews come and they pop up this piece of plywood that's loose. It's in a it's in a it's a, in a channel. If it's a loose piece of plywood, they pop it off. They put a ladder in the doorway, and then they and then they have to just climb up the ladder, and then they climb up on top of there. Tell me, Thomas, did you manage to find Florence? She ran out into the ground. <laughs> chandelier. So, at the very end of the play, as the final monologue is being performed, the chandelier drop, flickers, drops, and lights cut out as it's landing, about to land on the person standing there. Real simple, you got a chandelier, and I've got two, three lines. One line is the safety cable, hanging it at its lowest point, so it can never drop past its lowest point. Attached and kind of tied next to that is the electrics cable, so that it have electrics going to it, and then there's a rope attached to it. And the rope runs through a couple series of pulleys across and to backstage, where when it comes time, the technician doesn't drop the rope, but he unhandles it and he lowers the rope and speeds up, but as it doesn't let it just drop, he slows it down so where it's about overhead. So you never want that jolt of the chandelier dropping and catching its safety cable or anything like that. You want the chandelier in a control fall so that it hits its mark, but doesn't ever put stress on that safety cable or the rope. A murder! I have a shot matter! Well, I think that covers all the tricks. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I will try to answer them or help you out. Listen, this show's a lot of fun. It's a technical beast, but you have a good time with it. You stick to your strengths, stick to what you know. You have a good time. The actors will have a good time. The technicians uh, work together. You're gonna, have a, you're gonna have a great show, I know it. Uh, we cut out some tricks that we didn't feel comfortable doing or ran out of time, and that's okay. You make the best show for your audience and for yourself that you can do. And uh, I would love to see what kind of creative solutions you guys come up uh, for the problems because some of my solutions work and some of them didn't do so well, but we made it work. And I would love to see what you guys come up with in your own shows. So happy uh, play that goes wrong and you got this.